May the power of goodness prevail in Tom's interactions with others and all he serves. Let the people say. Amen. Amen. Wisdom inspired the prophets. Uphold Tom and all who speak out against oppression and justice. Let us say. Amen. 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 Now, if uh, everyone, uh, if you can, uh, grab a drink. Uh, James Salt from Catholics United is going to come out and toast uh, Tom Periello. So James is on his way. Uh, remember, there are no lines for drinks outside, and it's a warm tent. <laughs> Big well, only if we stick together, though. That's the idea. Oh, we get too much. You get your coat? <laughs> I want you to read Dennis' director. Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. If it was close to the in the in the tradition of uh, you know Tom being a, a good Italian American, we thought it was appropriate to. Uh, the toast on tonight as well, in addition to our, our blessings. J Jim Wallace uh, has this saying that faith is believing in something despite the evidence, and then watching the evidence change. And of all the people that I know, Tom represents that more than anyone. You know, whether it's working in uh, conflict zones where uh, those uh, folks hold little hope or uh, whether it's working in the 5th Congressional District where you're down 40,000 votes and 30 points uh, three months before the election. He, of all folks, demonstrates a, a certain sense of faith that we can create a new reality. And um, Tom, you, you're a person of faith, you're a person of justice, you're a friend. You're a member of Congress. <laughs> you are an inspiration. It's Tom Perello. Wow. Um, I was already feeling the pressure of you know, economic crisis, conservation in the Middle East, and then y'all threw all those blessings on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sister Ann, I want to thank you that um, in, after the 04 election cycle, when uh, so much of our um, hopes, our dreams have been put into that being a transformational and prophetic election cycle, and, and seeing us fall short that time, I was in a pretty dark and, and hurt place, and know where she went. Right there you are. You ministered to me then, and again, that blessing now is very, very special. Um, and I want to thank uh, Jim and er or, uh, James and Eric for putting this together and everyone else who was part of the host committee. The success we have to celebrate um, is much larger, obviously, than my election. It's even larger than uh, Barack Obama's election, as historic as that's been. For the first time in our lifetime, we got to witness a movement election. Uh, this election was one about expanding our sense of what's possible in this country. Uh, whether that was seeing uh, the historic run and election of an African American president, uh, but it was also about handing our democracy back uh, to people. It was seeing in campaign event after campaign event people who've never done politics before coming out. Seeing things like the uh, Halifax County Democratic meetings at the beginning, there were about seven people on folding chairs, um, all of whom had been at it for, for years, um, and it was more of a griping session. Um, so by the end, ten days before the election, walking into a room in that same county with nearly 200 people crammed into the room, ranging in age from 12 to about 92, uh, crossing racial lines and class lines. Uh, what we saw was a movement that reflected our better angels in this country. And what we saw in campaign after campaign was that the politics of fear, the politics of division, uh, was indeed defeated by the politics of hope. And that is something that everyone in this room was an enormous part of. And as exciting as it was to do conviction politics in the campaign, now comes the difficult part of doing conviction politics as we legislate and as we govern. This is a time of great crisis. 
many of you do e-advocacy work, so you know the crisitunity uh, phrase. Um, in this crisis is a great opportunity. Um, we have an opportunity to change the terms of the debate and governing as well. And much of that leadership is going to come from the White House, but we're certainly going to take our job in Congress very seriously. Whether that's the idea of speaking up for the least among us, uh, or whether it's the idea that we can use this stimulus not just to put people back to work, as important as that is, but to redefine America's competitiveness by putting us at the forefront of a green economy, by taking seriously issues of sustainability and workforce development, of living wage jobs, and the same kind of investment in our workforce that we haven't seen in a generation. We need to call people. We need to have a call to service, a generational call to service that says, you know, if you're going to go and join the State Department or USID or work in our communities, we're going to help you go to college. These are all things uh, that we can envision. This is a time, and I urge everyone, as tired as we are from the campaign, to be tireless over the next month. The stark reality is there's a very good chance we are going to spend more money in this stimulus package than has been spent since World War II. But keep in mind, this may be the last chance we get to do this. People joked with us during the orientation that we may be the last Congress that gets to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest, we don't have any left. We're going to spend this time because we have no choice. Because we do stand at the uh, edge of an economic meltdown. And that means right now is the time where the voices from the campaign need to be heard. We need to be hearing them in Congress. Uh, President-elect Obama needs to be hearing them on his way to the White House. This is a time to swing for the fences. This is a time to think big. We won't get everything that we want. Uh, but we have to put it out there. We have to be reasonable when it falls short. But we can't get it if we don't ask. So we need to be rethinking our economy. We need to be re rethinking the way that we do workforce development in our economically depressed communities. As many of you know, because you came down uh, to my district, we have many counties where poverty rates are above 30%. We have uh, the unemployment rate in Martinsville, Virginia, just hit 15%. We have triple the teenage pregnancy rates uh, of the state and parts of our district. There's a tremendous amount of pain. Some of that can be addressed through policy. Some of that is a matter of personal ministering to people. And we need to be present both as a grassroots movement and uh, as a movement to change the policy of this country. This is a time, I believe, where we could look back 20 or 30 years from now and say this was the moment. This was the moment where America could have gone into a period of decline in terms of moral authority in the world, in terms of pulling back, in terms of economic competitiveness, or we could look back on this as that moment where our generation stepped up and said, we're not going to let that happen. We are going to make the kind of grand gestures and aggressive push that is going to create a new sustainable economy uh, and new upward mobility for those in the working middle class, and at the same time to take seriously issues of crisis around the world. I have been given a tremendous blessing not just to represent the people of the 5th District. I just came from a panel uh, from the U.S. Institute of Peace um, where I got to be sitting next to General Petraeus uh, in front of 1,500 people talking about non-military solutions in Afghanistan. I have been given, I have been given the, the chance and the credibility to do that because of all of your work and all of your support. And this is just the beginning of the fights that we have ahead. Thank you so much for being not only supporters of my campaign, but my community of faith, my virtual community of faith here in Washington. I will lean on you. There are going to be many, many tough decisions ahead. Uh, but I believe this is our time, our time to be a voice for those who haven't had a voice in a very long time. Thank you very, very much. So, Pam, thank you so much for, for being with us tonight. We want to encourage people to stay. We have a lot more drinks and a lot more food and that heated tent. Uh, in the back. Uh, and, and finally, if you didn't get a chance to um, sign in um, or give a contribution to help uh, Tom retire his debt so we can keep him in Congress, uh, I would encourage you to stop by and uh, at the table here uh, on your way out. But thank you all for coming. Uh, and uh, drink up and eat up. Thank <laughs> you.